If there's such a thing as a cool cemetery, this is it. From its history to its famous tenants to its rock and roll shows and residents, this cemetery does not disappoint. Not only are Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney here, but Chris Cornell and Johnny Ramone just recently moved in. This is the place of legends. It was almost lost in the 80s and 90s when its owner, Jules Roth, a convicted felon and millionaire, let it go to hell in a handbasket. Turned out he embezzled $9 million, and it wasn't looking good for the residents either. It was so bad that a decomposing head of a woman stolen from a crypt was found under a parked car outside the grounds. In 1998, brothers Tyler and Brent Cassidy bought the property and saved the day. Or did they? They turned it into a rock and roll venue and glammed the whole place up. Then one of the brothers and their father were jailed on fraud charges regarding a funeral company in Missouri that paid for Hollywood Forever's renovation. So good or bad, Hollywood caught up with Hollywood Cemetery and the dead are rocking forever at Hollywood Forever. What? Today's episode is Hollywood Forever Cemetery. When I first came to California, actually when I had my first apartment ever, um, it was about two blocks from here. And um, this is on Santa Monica Boulevard. This is 52 acres. The cemetery was created in 1899. It's one of the few cemeteries left that has the above uh, ground tombs, tombstones. Uh, I used to come here because the nearest park is Griffith Park, which is like 10 miles away. So I would hang out here, commune with nature, and found some amazing things, and I'm gonna show you some of them right now. This place is kind of famous for its peacocks. There's one right there. I'm not sure why there's so many peacocks, but it is quite a, uh, quite a beautiful thing, actually. Hello, Mr. Peacock. I know you don't like me being here. This shows you how at one Paramount Studios was with the cemetery. Literally, here's the cemetery, and these are the Paramount Studios workshops. I mean, you can go zoom in right on the windows and see inside, so. Kind of amazing how this is truly Hollywood Cemetery. I'm gonna go touch Paramount Studios. I hope I don't get shot or something. But look at this. I mean, these are the windows. These are where the people work, right inside here. I'm gonna touch Paramount Studios. Ooh! I just touched Paramount Studios. How cool is that? So as I'm walking along, I come upon Dick Dale, famous surfer guitarist. Dick Dale, surfing and a swinging. So let's have a fine hand. <laughs> when I looked at the heavens, they were moving in fast. I knew I better make it, cause they just don't last. Didn't expect to see him here, but there he is. So I don't know who Pete Stanley is. I'm gonna leave it up to the narrator maybe to figure out. Maybe he really wasn't anybody. I don't think his wife has died yet. But this right here is amazing. This is a marble piano. I guess you throw money in there for tips. I didn't ring any, sorry Pete. But uh, yeah, quite amazing. Pete Stanley, he did it his way. And the man loves Steinmetz. Uh, there's one of them in their beauty. Hello, beauty. Oh, ho, ho, thank you for that. It was very nice of you. You gonna turn around? Let me see it on the oh. Well, the other side is not so pretty. Turn around again. Come on, buddy. There you go. You're so pretty. So this is one of the strangest tombstones here. This is Carl Morgan Bigsby and he had nothing to do with rocketry whatsoever. He was a graphic artist of some sort. 
And he must have loved rocketry because he built his tombstone. It says here, the exact size of an Atlas rocket. And the weirdest part is over here, Constance, I don't know if it's his wife, born in 1914, but it says, too bad, we had fun. So you gotta wonder what was going on in Carl's mind here. But anyway, he died in 59, so this was kind of a, uh, kind of a unique thing to do, even back then, so. Hmm. Makes me wonder, because I don't see him anywhere around here. That's kind of, I mean, there's only so much patience that one wife can put up with. So things get just a little more unusual. This wasn't here last time I was here. Well, actually, none of this. We got like a little statue garden here. And a very unusual mausoleum here. I'm not sure who this is. Let's see if we can look inside. Andrew Charles Burke. So, I don't know exactly what religion that is, but quite an unusual mausoleum. I was walking along and this tombstone made me sad because it was kind of hidden by the bushes and then there's all these things on top of it. But then as I walk around, look who it is, Estelle Getty from, what was it, the Golden Girls. So she's got quite a tombstone here. I'm gonna have to research this guy, Roman Kozlov. He absolutely loved guitars, so. Mr. Uh, Narrator Man. Sadly, there is nothing on this guy. Google has nothing. This tombstone is his only legacy to life on this planet, but he loved guitars. I had to take a video of Paige Peters, only because, well, it's kind of cool. It says he was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Died in Hermosa Beach, 1916. Motion picture actor. Obviously silent. But look at how far over he is. I don't know where he's buried, but the road's right there. It's kind of sad. Poor Paige. Oh well. What can you do? I found him. There he is. That's all, folks. No blank. Man of a thousand voices. Yeah. Quite a story there. Google him. That guy had quite a career. So this is Anton Yelchin. He is known for the Star Trek movies. And actually one came out posthumously. He died at a very young age in a horrible circumstance. His vehicle came out of park and more or less ran him over. I think it was a Jeep. So this is him, Anton Yelchin, best known for Star Trek. Now here's a sad story too. This is Hattie McDaniel. She won an Academy Award for Gone with the Wind, 1939. How do I explain this? Her dream was to be buried here in this cemetery. That was her dream her whole life. But when she died in 1952, Hollywood and all its genius wouldn't allow black people to be buried here. So she had to be buried, I guess, back where she was uh, born, I'm not sure. And then when the new owners found out about that story, they wanted to bring her here, but the family said, well, she had been where she is long enough. So this is more of just a tribute and actually fulfills her dream to be here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Hattie McDaniel. Here's some more of the unusualness here at Hollywood Forever. This is David Layton Scott. I'm assuming he was one heck of a uh, mountain climber. And this is one heck of a tombstone, I gotta tell you. So I missed this one completely. Anthony David Layton Scott is Tony Scott, obviously. 
Tony Scott, who is Ridley Scott's brother, directed Top Gun, Days of Thunder, and Enemy of the State, just to name a few. He tragically committed a witnessed suicide by jumping off the Vincent Thomas Bridge. And here is Cecil B. DeMille. He directed about every major motion picture done in the 40s and 50s in Hollywood. Uh, he has quite a tomb here, surrounded by all of his family. And I guess a love for squirrels, I'm not sure. So this is Cecil B. DeMille. This is Douglas Fairbanks and Douglas Fairbanks Jr., his son, are buried here. But it's what's behind this grave that is the most interesting to me. So yeah, it's behind here. I buried all of my hamsters back here. When I had a girlfriend one time, she wanted a pet. And I wasn't ready to invest in anything heavy, so I got her two hamsters and the guy promised me they were both females and he lied and there were babies and then of course we broke up so i was stuck with the hamsters i buried them in microphone cases that was all i had somewhere right in here but obviously they dug them up that must have been quite a surprise for them actually so here it is burt reynolds no ifs ands or buts no dates no nothing just here's the man and I gotta tell you, Bert got himself a heck of a location. Look at that view. Sometimes you have to lose yourself before you can find anything. Dag nabbit, Bert. When you pick something, you pick it right. You know, this is a film I want them to remember me by. So the biggest tombstone goes to the biggest guy. His name is Griffith. He's got a really weird name. Griffith Jenkins Griffith. Not a lot of imagination there. I'm not sure how he got that name. We'll be doing a whole episode on him, Griffith Park. But uh, yeah, he was one rich son of a gun when it came to LA. And quote unquote donated the land for Griffith Park. But we'll go into that in great detail. So there you go, the biggest tomb in the cemetery goes to the biggest man. So due to recent events, they took down the Confederate Memorial, but they definitely still have tombs here with Confederate soldiers in them. Confederate States Army, I didn't even know that was a thing. Confederate States, hmm. So none of you youngsters will know who this is, Valerie Harper. Her claim to fame was the Rhoda show, actually, but first the Mary Tyler Moore show. So I didn't expect to find her grave. It's very nicely done here. So there it is, Valerie Harper. The cats are welcome here. They obviously chase away the mice. And look, they get along with the birds so well. Hello, kitty cat. I don't have any food, sorry. Even a big fish wants food. Look at that mother. So this is Joan Hackett. Nobody really knows who she is, I'm sure, especially the generation that's watching, but I just love what it says on her tombstone. Go away, I'm asleep. So Don Adams, yeah, this is it. So that's why they needed this big old copper plate because it's just this statue here I don't even see his name on it anywhere so unmarked grave except for that get smart he's got his shoe I don't know if that's the way I'd want to be remembered talking on a shoe but uh, I guess it made him a lot of money so it was worth it that's so cool so there's Fay Ray a true friend of the ducks the ducks love Fay and Fay loves the ducks Here's a wacky one. Full size, man. I am not kidding you. That is some wacky tombstone right there, baby. The things you see here. Coming here to attack me. 
Please don't attack me. I know, you want food. But I don't have any, I'm sorry. But thank you for visiting nonetheless. You are quite majestic in your own way. J. Dabney Day, Mr. and Mrs. This is a very interesting tombstone. I always liked it because when you go behind it, there's that little hidden detail. And whoever carved that was really good. Blanchard. I'm not sure exactly what he did, but there's something about this. Oh, I know one thing this guy did. He put up the money and started the Hollywood Bowl. So there, that's something. But there's something about this sculpture that has just fascinated me. It's just amazing. I don't know what it signifies, but it is amazing. Mickey Rooney. There he is. He died not too long ago. Well, 2014, I guess that's long ago. He's right across from Stars Row, I guess you'd call it. Mickey Rooney. So an interesting story is about Judy Garland. She was buried, I guess, where she was born, I don't know, for the longest time. And then they decided to move her here. I don't remember what, Mr. Narrator? Judy Garland's children, Liza Minnelli, Lorna Luft, and Joe Luft, wanted to bring their mother's remains home to Hollywood from her original burial site at New York's Ferncliff Cemetery. Judy's third husband, Mickey Deans, buried her in New York, but her children said she wished to be interned with her family in Hollywood. Judy Garland's final resting place. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. I really, 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 really wish I could tell you that this is where Toto is buried. But it's not, sadly. Toto, let's see, the story is, I think he was born in Altadena in um, 1933 to a couple, and they had problems with him, wet in the carpet, so he, they brought him to a guy named Carl Spitz, who was a trainer of dogs. And somehow he got left there. Somehow they didn't pick him up. So Carl had him and then Clark Gable went out there to his training facility and said, hey, Shirley Temple's doing a movie called Bright Eyes. You ought to um, take him over there, see if you can get an audition. And sure enough, he got the audition. Shirley loved him. Then a few years later, he was obviously in Wizard of Oz, but you gotta remember one thing, his real name, his name was changed to Toto in 1945, but his name is Terry, was Terry. Now the sad thing about Terry is Carl Spitz, the original owner, although he did bury dogs in dog cemeteries, he didn't bury Toto in a dog cemetery. He buried him on his property, which is nice property, a lot of trees and everything like that, but wouldn't you know it, 1964, in comes the freeway. So literally, Toto is underneath a freeway. So this is not Toto's grave, but it is something to let us have the memory. Well, we just had the story of Toto. Actually, Toto's way over there. And Adrian is right here. He did a lot of the uh, costumes in Hollywood, and he is most famously known for the Ruby Slippers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he is the creator of the Ruby Slippers and everything else that's in that movie. Adrian, costume designer to the stars. So here's a find. Carl Alfalfa Switzer. Amazing life for that guy. He was obviously Alfalfa in the Hour Gang series. Now the reason Carl has the dog is he used to train dogs. That's kind of what he did at the end and actually got him in trouble. 
1959, Switzer and a friend went over to the Mission Hills home of Moses Bud Stiltz. To collect a debt, Switzer believed he was owed for recovering his dog. A fight broke out during which Stiltz shot and killed Switzer. A jury later ruled the incident justifiable homicide, even though there was a witness that stated otherwise. Well, we just got done with alfalfa out there, and I thought it'd be good to come in here and pay some respects to Darla. Darla Jean Hood. She was a little rascal. Narrator, you want to take it away? In 1979, she was brought to the hospital for an appendectomy. Following the procedure, she died of a sudden heart attack. The reason? The blood given to her in a transfusion during surgery was contaminated with hepatitis. Here's Peter Finch. Nobody will really remember him except for this great line that I love so much. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore! Peter Finch. Any of you who know Bewitched, this is David White, Larry Tate, this is his ashes. And the reason there's so many pictures of his son in here is that he was killed. The son was killed in that Lockerbie, Scotland plane bomb. Remember where the bomb went off and everybody died in the plane? So I guess the son died 1988. That's his ashes, and then David died two years later. Kind of a terrible, terrible double burial here. So it took me forever to find it. But there it is, from the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, Kenneth Miles. He's the racer who died at the very end. Oop! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The racer that died at the very end. Kenneth Miles, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. So I'm walking by here. Can't believe it. This is from the movie. Um, who was he? Punches Pilot from Jesus Christ Superstar. I wash my hands of your demolition. Die if you want to. You innocent puppet! That's the logo. I saw this logo and I said, oh, isn't it weird that somebody would use that logo for their tune? So I gotta do some research on Irene Godagno. Mama Irene. Not only was she perfect, she was Italian. She was somebody. They're definitely doing her up. So I gotta find out exactly. Narrator, take it away. Mama Irene Gadagno was the mother of EDM Insomniac Events founder Pascal Rotella. Pascal is the creator of the renowned Electric Daisy Carnival. So that's Mama Gadagno. Guadag, I narrator knows it better than me. So I'm gonna need some help from Mr. Narrator here. This is Bianca. Now I know that she died in Louisiana, I think in a car crash, and she was part of a band here that the narrator will now tell you about. But this is kind of what started Forever Hollywood into being this kind of iconic rock place. Bianca was the lead singer and bass player for the band Betty Blowtorch. She was killed when she accepted a ride from a drunk driver in New Orleans. She was only 36. D.D. Ramon, I gotta go now. Now, I want everybody to know that not one of the Ramones was named Ramon and they were not brothers. D.D. Ramon is Douglas Glenn Colvin. 
Look at all the people giving kisses. What does it say here? I feel so safe flying on a ray on the highest trails above. So there you go, D.D. Ramon, his fake brother is right over there. It was actually D.D.'s grave that made him think, hey, I want one too. And of course, he had to outdo him. So there you go, D.D. Ramon or Doug Colvin. Here is a very unusual one. This is Johnny Ramon. Now, I'm not sure if his ashes are actually in there or not, because his wife may have them. Maybe when she dies, they'll put them in there. Maybe they're in there right now. I don't know. But uh, he always loved this place. And um, who was it? Rob Zombie, I think, gave him a little trophy that looked like this, and he challenged him to make a big one, and there it is. Forever, this is Johnny Ramone's grave. More rock and roll. This is an unusual story. This is uh, Chris Cornell. You know, I can't play you the song because I'll get kicked off YouTube, but it's a like, black old son. Here. here, Mr. Narrator, take it away. Tell him about it, all right? Chris Cornell was the lead singer for Soundgarden and Audio Slave. With his nearly four octave range, he was considered one of the best vocalists in rock. He took his life in a hotel room in Detroit after a Soundgarden concert in 2017. It's right here in this area where some of the most famous people in the world and the lead singer from Linkin Park. And the sad thing about that is he's, he sang that Alleluia song. And then two weeks later, he killed himself. So, really bittersweet gravesite here. Chris Cornell. Narrator, give me a report on this Robert Kulik, too. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. He looks like... What is he called? Bob Kulik. Bob Kulik. Give me a report on Bob Kulik. Let's see what he's got to say. Bob's brother was a Kiss replacement. Bob produced a heavy metal Christmas album. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. But more important than any of that, he co-wrote an epic SpongeBob SquarePants song. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Way back before SpongeBob, Our Bob was recording new songs for APM or Associated Production Music. They supplied music to productions all over Hollywood and they were supplying songs for SpongeBob since episode one. It's rumored that the entire episode, Band Geeks, was written around this one production track. Bob co-wrote it with David Glenn Isley. It's an amazing track and if I talk over it, there's a chance I can use it in the video. Bob and Dave didn't know it was being used until David's daughter came running out of her room shouting, Dad, your voice is coming out of SpongeBob. So Bob must have died a happy man, knowing he wrote and performed such an epic track. I know I will. And now some fun facts. When Mama Cass Elliot of the Mamas and Papas was cremated in 1974, the structure was so bad that bricks started falling around her body, but it was too late to stop the process. But years later in 2001, just hours after George Harrison of the Beatles passed away, the family had his body cremated by Hollywood Forever in keeping with his Eastern faith. His ashes were returned to the family and were scattered in the sacred Ganges River in India. The cemetery also helped shape the history of American film. In 1970, Paramount Studios had financial troubles and wanted to sell the studio lot. 
They offered the land to then owner Jules Ross so he could expand the cemetery, but due to his financial troubles, he passed. Paramount opted to keep the studio. Had Paramount been sold, it's possible The Godfather would never have been made. At the very least, Francis Ford Coppola wouldn't have directed it. As a result, the cemetery played a small part in helping to revive American cinema. So there you have it. Probably the most eclectic cemetery on the planet. Perfect for Hollyweird and perfect for generations to come. Hollywood forever. There are many more places to visit. We'll see you soon. Remember, licking doorknobs is illegal on other planets. <laughs>